fishing, it's fine, but hooking is the only way. We're gonna show you how to catch some fish today. So hey guys, salmon season is opening in my area and one of the techniques I like doing is jigging for them. It's a different technique and I've been doing this for years. I've ca caught a lot of fish doing this and watch my video because it's an awesome way to catch them but you have to do it the correct way and I go over it and show you how to do it and I hope you like this video and please subscribe. And if you like, leave a comment, and I'll usually get back to you within three days. So you could ask me anything you want, and I'll answer you right back. So watch this video. You'll learn how to jig for salmon. So one of the things I want to go over is um, equipment. So number one is to have a decent rod. I like to use rods that are in lengths of seven and a half to eight foot long one piece, something that has a little bit of a tip to it, so it has a little bend, but you gotta have a lot of power because when you start hooking these fish, they're pretty powerful. So you need to have a reel that holds anywhere right around at least 125 yards, and I use 50 pound braid when I'm doing this, and it doesn't matter on the gear ratio, I use six to one, but you could use seven, eight, or whatever you wanna use. You want to make sure your rod has enough butt on the back where you can put some leverage in on them fish because when you hook these fish like this, they get, you have your hands full. So basically, going over some of the equipment, you're going to see I have 50 pound braid here and I tie it to a barrel swivel. So I have a barrel swivel on here, so I tie the braid to the barrel swivel. Then I'm going to take a short piece of monofilament and it could be 25 or 30 pound test. You want something that's kind of stiff because if you were to tie the braid right to this spoon and you jig it up, it falls over so fast that it keeps getting stuck on the line. So you're gonna get your hook calling your line like this all the time. So putting that heavy monofilament line right here, like probably two and a half to three feet long, it actually keeps the spoon from turning over so you don't get so many snags. So the spoon will pop up like this and then dart, go down like this. So if you have braid tied right to it, it'll go like this and flip right over and get stuck. So this in line right here is very important that you use 25 to 30 pound tests. We're out here salmon fishing, mouth of the American on the Sacramento. And look, I got my first salmon. Well, not really. It's more than the ocean. She's got another striper. <laughs> got a nice sand. What you using? Homemade jig. Fong special. Spoon weights. There's a lot of spoons on the market. You're going to use anywhere between two and three ounces in the river systems. So two to three ounces. And, and you're going to say, well, how do I know which ones to use? Well, the thing about it is being able to control your boat so your line is always vertical. So when you're spooning, you want your line straight up and down and I get on the front trolling motor and I'll chase it. If the line starts drifting away from me, 
I'll chase it with electric motor and jig it, but I want to make sure that it's straight up and down. So I'm going to put this spoon in the water and show you. So I'm going to let it down. You want it to go straight down. So I drop my spoon straight down. Okay, I hit the bottom and then I just jig, jig up like this. I want my rod about a foot and a half, two foot to the water. And I just pop it up, lift it. So what I do is I reel my tip down to the water. So when my jig is on the bottom, I'm about a foot and a half to two feet up. And then I lift it about maybe three feet at the most. And what I do is I pop it. So I snap it and then follow it down. Snap it, follow it down. So you don't want to hold the spoon up and then let it down with the rod tip. You pop it up and let it fall on its own. That way it'll be rocking back and forth. And when you get one, you'll know it. Those fish, when they hit, they'll just double your rod over. Hey, what do you got, Denise? Oh my God! What you got? Something that's gonna spool me. Ain't gonna spool you. Just bring the thing in. Everybody's it's still taking a while. Got all these fishermen watching you. It took you like ten minutes to bring in your line. <laughs> so here we are. About. 20, 30 minutes later, <laughs> he's still fighting this thing. Diggy, look at that. All my games have been lost. <laughs> well, at least you're having fun. <laughs> I'm having fun. So the fish has been taken out. She gets in a few feet and it takes out 10. <laughs> One step forward, five steps back. Rookie. So I, I put my finger on the spoon. Yeah, and you just lift. And when you feel real hard that he's pulling, then you gotta let him run. But you can keep your thumb on there and put pressure on him. Keep reeling down, lift up slow. And then when he wants to go, you just take your thumb off. You'll feel it. You'll feel the pressure. Reel down again. Get to the swivel. Not the swivel. Just lift. Oh, Yay! <laughs> Look what you got here. Whoa! Big oh boy. Oh my God, he's huge. Well, that was the biggest fish I think I've ever caught. What? Biggest fish I've ever caught. It took, it long took me like shit. 20 or 30 minutes. <laughs> My wrist is broken. <laughs> Beautiful. Got it on the Fong special. That's I right. What it is. So, boat control. What happens if you have, say, I have a two ounce spoon and the water is going real fast and my line keeps getting way ahead of me? So then I'll either go to a heavier spoon or I get on the trolling motor. So when I get on the trolling motor, I'm gonna follow my line. So my line will always be vertical. So when I'm jigging like this, I want it straight up and down. So I pop it a little, straight up and down, just like this. And a good way to do it is hold, I hold up by the reel on my front hand and hold the back of the rod. I'm holding the back of the rod and I just snap it down. I just pop it down. Just a little short jerk like that and pop it. And when you get one, it'll just load up. But make sure your line is straight up and down and it's not drifting away that way or that way. Usually like if I was drifting and my line's going that way, then I know I need to put a little heavier jig on. Otherwise, I try to keep it, get on the electric motor, and follow that line in the water so that it's straight up and down. And you'll catch a lot of fish. And a lot of times what I do is I look at my meter all the time and I want to stay on a break line. So these fish, once they move up out of the ocean, they start coming up our rivers, they'll follow, they're going to point A to point B. So they're headed back to the hatchery. So when they're doing that, they're coming up a river system. It's like a person traveling in a car. You know, you don't want to get sick. So those fish have a comfort zone. 
And I've found in my area that that comfort zone is usually around 18 to 22 feet of water. So I'll look for those brake lines and I'll get on those brakes and I'll just pop, it, pop this spoon right along that brake line, keeping the line vertical. And as you'll see, you'll see some fish getting caught. We are not alone. So when the salmon make their way out of the ocean, they start coming up, you know, your freshwater rivers. Um, usually they'll enter, usually in the fall, but some places the season starts in uh, late summer. And some of the best places to concentrate on that time of year, watch your local uh, water districts where they're releasing water out of certain lakes. So like if a water, uh, lake is releasing a 3,000 cubic flows, which is much higher than normal. And so I would concentrate on those areas where the confluences are. Because these fish, when the rivers are warm, they'll go suspended, meaning that they're going to only be in the water column, maybe 10 or 15 feet down, and they just book up the river. But once they hit these confluences and the water temperature changes because they're letting water out of a lake, they usually release the water out of the bottom of the lake, which is the coldest. So the water temperature might be five to eight degrees cooler. So once that water hits the main river system, those fish, when they hit that area, they're going to stop and hang around there. So it's a known fact that those fish will stay there for two, three days before they make their move and move on. So remember, the confluence is some of the best area that you can fish early in the season. And jigging is a very effective way of catching them fish. So most of the time when the salmons move up in the river systems, they're pretty much not eating anymore. So what they'll do is they'll come up in our river systems. They're going point A to point B. So look for that. Number one is look for the comfort zone and also look for confluences. So another thing is what these fish do is they strike out of anger. So I've found that a lot of times when your river systems have tides, so usually like if you have a high outgoing tide and then you have the low incoming tide, well, the water has less movement when the water is dead low and starts rising rather than when it's high and starts going. So I found that a lot of these salmon strike better when the water is going out. So when the water's traveling faster, and I think what happens is you know, when they're heading upstream that that current is going in their face, gives them a lot of oxygen in their gills. So anything that gets in their way, they're gonna strike it. So they will attack anything that's fluttering in front of them. So these spoons like this, and you're jigging right in front of them, you know, they'll grab that thing. So you guys saw how I do this. I really like jigging for salmon. It's one of the ways that I really like to catch them. I catch a lot of fish doing it this way and it's uh, very effective and you'll catch some big fish doing this. I hope you enjoyed the video and thanks for watching and I'll see you next week. Fishing is fun, but hooking is the only way. We're gonna show you how to catch some fish today